once I even I have me, the one card. Let's... Alan, you may need to unmute yourself in a sec. And same for Christian and Manny. I will stay on mute. Okay. Uh, so we are live on YouTube. Just got to share my screen and do my introductory chat before we hand over to the action. Uh, just to confirm, can everyone hear me and see my screen? Yep. It is very clear. We can hear you clearly. Uh, so we get cracking with this. So welcome, everybody. Uh, two presentations today. So as usual, I'll try and keep my talk as quick and brief as possible so that the time is dedicated to Excel rather than my waffle. Um, but we've got uh, many up first to talk about the sequence function, followed by Christian to talk about joins. Uh, and as usual, I'll leave themselves to introduce themselves properly and, and go through their content. Uh, I just want to mention a few things uh, kind of meetup specific. Uh, so starting with upcoming events, I think I published it last week, I think. All these days are kind of merging into one. But in a few weeks, 12th of August is our next one. Uh, it's an online event. And we have uh, Dr. Isaac Gottlieb, I think he's in the house today at the moment. Uh, also got uh, Dick as well. So Isaac's presenting on forecasting in Excel. Uh, more information about it on the Meetup website. So you can go and check it out there about the specifics about what's going to be discussed. And Dick is going to be discussing the Excel publish add-in, which he is uh, co-responsible for, uh, along with a gentleman called David Hopp, um, which is an add-in to assist the publishing from Excel to BI. I say more information about that on the Meetup page. I don't want to say too much about it here. Uh, so go check that out on RSVP if you're interested. Apologies if you can hear that noise. Um, on the Wednesday the 8th is the plan for the next event. So stick it in your diary if you wish. Uh, presentation that not 100% confirmed yet, although pretty much there. But I won't say any more on that until it becomes true. <laughs> um, and then also breaking news that I don't know presentation exactly yet is that Thursday the 23rd should be our first in-person event. So for anyone who is kind of local to London or happens to be there around that time, uh, that should be our first in-person event back. Uh, some pretty exciting stuff. And I know there's quite a few, I say quite a few, I saw two of them at least, um, like in the event right now who I remember from the days we used to meet in person. <laughs> so it's, yeah, pretty good news. Hopefully I'll be able to meet a lot of faces that I haven't seen for a long, long time. Uh, and maybe a few new ones, people who have joined this event since, or as they happen to be around London. And, and as I mentioned before, I'm hoping moving forward uh, to do one in person and one online event per month. Uh, so it'll be a bit for everyone, hopefully. So we'll get some confirmation presentation soon, but they're the dates if people want to uh, slot them in. Uh, Usual talk, but especially for those who may be new coming into this, uh, this session is live at the moment on YouTube and is also being recorded. So anyone interested in a replay of this event, if they have to leave for any reason, or if you want to follow it through at your own pace with the stuff that many and Christian will go through, uh, there is a replay. The link is in the meetup page. So if you go there, you'll see the link, but we will also provide it in the follow-up email that we send to everybody who's RSVP'd. And I think Taya's sending that possibly tomorrow, no pressure Taya. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe whenever she's got time. Um, but you'll have to RSVP to receive that. It will have files that Christian and many are gonna kindly share uh, to answer that question before it comes up. Uh, and also the replay link and uh, information about upcoming events and all, all that usual stuff. Uh, the other thing that nobody's brought up but some of you might be thinking, and my slide didn't come up. I've obviously ruined this PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> but I should have a slide which didn't say much. It was to do with the cloud contest that a few of you in this call have been involved with as well. And some of you may have noticed I've not released any news on that. 
And that's because I've not been given any news. Not to show my frustration, uh, through multiple emails, Microsoft are lacking some kind of response. So I emailed them again just prior to this. So hopefully I'll get some information soon. I've got no idea who the winners of the contest are or, uh, yeah, but hopefully it's coming soon. Apologies, we haven't heard anything. And obviously the close for that date was the 30th of June. So it's about three, four weeks ago. Or three weeks, if my maths is correct. Uh, yeah, so coming soon on that. Apologies for no information as to this date. Right. Uh, I'm going to shut up uh, and stop my share. Uh, many, you good to go, my friend? Uh, Mark, just unmute yourself, buddy. Many, you okay? Looks very focused there. It does. But not on us. <laughs> Is he frozen? What's going on? Many, you okay? Can you hear us? Because we got you are currently muted, so we cannot hear you. I've got to send him a WhatsApp message to wake him up. <laughs> Thank you. Really, really. Can you hear me now? Can yes. you hear me? Yeah. I, okay, I'm I'm muted. I I'm unmuted myself. Just a second. Um, I want to share the screen. Can you see the screen? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So first of all, I um, hi everybody. Before we begin, I'd like to thank the organizers, both uh, both uh, T and Ellen, for giving me the opportunity to lecture tonight. I'm very grateful for that. I must admit that I'm both excited and nervous. I've never lectured in front of such a huge audience. And besides, there are so many Excel MVPs in the audience that the global Excel, Excel Summit can be organized in seconds. Okay, my name is Meni Porat and I'm from Israel. Actually, perhaps unlike most of you, I have three main areas of expertise or interest if you like. I teach Excel, English and Arabic. In each of these fields, I've written a book. In Excel, I've composed the largest, most comprehensive list of keyboard shortcuts uh, MVP Roger Ogovia, who is uh, present, I think, um, who I believe is present here, advised me not to publish it because of lack of profitability prospects. However, if, if any of you might be interested, just contact me. I teach English in all levels. My expertise is, however, to prepare non-native English speakers to TOEFL IELTS exam, uh, if you're familiar with, with, this, with these kinds of exams in universities abroad, I mean, outside of Israel. I've written the largest list of homophones in English and was assisted by another participant of our webinar, Mr. Peter Bartholomew. A short demo of homophones and explanation of what the homophones are, are can be viewed on my blog. At the end of this lecture, I'll publish the post URL. And the third area is Arabic. Hebrew and Arabic, Hebrew is my native language, of course, and Arabic are two twin languages. Both are Semitic languages and there are many similarities between the two both in meaning and in sound. I've composed the first ever dictionary of more than 2,000 plus such words in both languages. A specimen is also available on my blog. Okay, and now let's get down and boogie. Again, a short intro, and this one is, refers to Excel. As you well know, in the beginning, Excel had only a, a simple formulae, which could yield only one result, whether the input was single cell or a range of cells. Then we had the array formula, the CSC, control shift enter, which could perform more than one calculation at, on a range of cells. But again, that was one, only one result. And now in Office 365, we have a new set of revolutionary functions, dynamic array functions, which take the old, older CSC formula a step further, multiple results in multiple cells. This is indeed a revolution. However, of all these new formula like X lookup, sort, sold by filter, etc. The most amazing one is the sequence. So this entire lecture of mine is dedicated to the sequence. So what is so special about the sequence? I hope we will have enough time to demonstrate and explain the versatility and efficiency of this uh, function. I'll show several uh, examples of, of how this function operates with numbers, text, and dates. And the, the pinnacle, to, so to speak, will be a special formula, which in a sense is as efficient as Power Query, 
I call this example the diamond diadem. Let's dive in and see. Okay. So let's go and see. Um, first of all, these are the subjects. Can you see the screen, the table of contents? Not at the moment, Manny. You may need to just share, take the share screen. Just a second. Share screen. Can you see it now? I mean, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, now we can. Okay, see. this is the beach of Tel Aviv, because in the summer everybody goes to the beach. And if it's clear enough, you can see the table of contents. Can you see the table of contents? Yeah. These are the subjects that I want to demonstrate and explain today. I'm not sure that I'll be able to uh, explain this and show them all, but let's start. Okay, the first uh, subject is sum without numbers, which actually this is the crux of the matter. What does it mean, sum without numbers? As you can see on the left, we have the usual sum function. You have the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and the, the function says uh, sum b2 to b6. But if you look on the right side of the screen, you can see that we don't need numbers in order to get to the same result. The function is sum, wrapping the sum, the sequence five. It's the, the first five integers, the five uh, in natural numbers, which are given inside the formula. No, no cells are needed. No numbers to sum. The array exists only in the memory. It doesn't exist in the sheet or on the sheet. It's as if, the sum is uh, is uh, in in a, a, a curly braces. You can see the, the curly braces, which gives you the sum of one, two, three, and five. This is the old method of specifying uh, an array inside a formula. This is one example. Another example is when you want to sum numbers, but not starting from one, but you start from you, you want to, to uh, sum 10 consecutive numbers, beginning with two, and the step is one. So the usual uh, formula would be, you have to write two and then uh, the sequence of one until you get it, uh, you write 11 and then sum it with the sum, the, the usual sum function. However, with the sequence, you don't need the numbers themselves. Suffice it to tell Excel, give me the sequence of 10 numbers starting from one and step one, and there, there, there are no numbers. Actually, there are no numbers on the sheet. The numbers, all the numbers are actually in Excel's memory. Okay. Another example, this time is not a summing, it's not summing, but multiplication. We all know, of course, the, uh, the factorial function, fact, in which you give it a number, and the number actually, um, uh, sum, uh, multiplies one by two, by three, by four, by five. So here are some examples in which you have to specify the numbers, the beginning number, the beginning of the, of the array, and then at the end of the array, like in the, in the product or the sum product, etc., etc. And the only two functions which do not need uh, uh, real numbers, I mean, uh, that appear on, this, on the sheet itself, itself is the sequence and the fact. And now I've, been, I've done a, a, a small trick. If you take, for example, this uh, function, the product, uh, or you take the sequence and you wrap it with product, then again, you, we know we don't, you, we, we don't need any array, neither vertical nor horizontal, and the, the result will be, of, of course, the same. But the tr trick is that with sequence, you can inverse the factorial which means you can create negative factorial, which of course is, is, is mathematically is, is nonsense. Is, there's no, no such thing. So if you write factorial of mi minus five, there's no result. The uh, Excel says none because there's no such, such thing, but you, you can bypass this if you use the, the trick of sequence starting with minus one and stepping with minus one. Uh, so far, so good. Let's go to another examples. Um, as I said, uh, there are two kinds of arrays. The first array that we have, we've already encountered is the one which is inside the curly braces. And of course, this kind of array is limited because first of all, you have to, it is hard coded inside the formula. The array 
Okay, the array goes to is hard coded. However, if you if we use the the uh, sequence, we can change the number as a parameter. I don't need if I want three the same as the previous one, but if I were to write four, of course the average changes. If I write five, the average changes. I don't have to do any. Uh, I don't have to 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 uh, touch the formula. Everything is done outside, which shows that this is a dynamic number, number uh, average by uh, dynamically. Okay. Um, I skip the ne next example. It's about the same. Uh, let's discuss uh, the relation or the advantages that the uh, sequence function gives us when we manipulate text. So first of all, we take some uh, funny examples. Just a second. Just a second, I have to, maybe I have to close some, some files. Okay, as you can see, I've taken a very famous phrase from the Gettysburg Address. I suppose that uh, most of you or all of you are famous with the, uh, are familiar with this famous uh, saying, four score seven years ago is the beginning of a famous address by, uh, by uh, Lincoln at the end of the uh, Civil War in the United States, like uh, 150 years ago or something. And, the, um, and I've taken this string of characters, okay, which resides in one cell, and I've, I've done some tricks to play with it. For example, the, uh, the formula is left D1, take D1, which is the, 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 uh, uh, the, the uh, um, string, and take sequence one by one. So if you can see each, each, uh, each cell contains one more character. The first begins with a letter F, the second one's a, an additional character O, and then the third one is U, and then four, etc., etc. Each consecutive cell contains one more character till you reach the full blown string. Okay, and we know by the by the, the end we know that the, the car the character string contains 30 characters. Okay. Let's have another example. This is also but something uh, interesting, but or the other way around, which means we take the last let, the last character and we build the uh, uh, the string from end to beginning. So the last character is E, and then G is added at the beginning before the O, and then before the G O and A is added, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, until we go on the reach where we reach the original uh, um, string. So each consecutive cell contains one more character till we read the full-blown string, but now we go from end to beginning. Okay, so far so good. Okay. All good, mate. No, no response. <laughs> That's all good. Okay, so now let's go to uh, uh, Lewis Carroll and he said in Alice's, in, or actually the, uh, the queen, queen of hearts said, chop with their heads. What does it mean? That we chop each, each letter from the beginning. We, we still refer to the same uh, character string, four score and seven years ago, but we chop the first character in each consecutive uh, um, appearance of, of, the, of the formula. So four score changes to all score and your score and our score, etc. And see, the end we have, we are left with only the last character. Uh, by the way, speaking about uh, Lewis Carroll, I'm going to enlarge the screen so you can see it in a better, or better resolution. 
Uh, he was, among other things, a mathematician who developed uh, also an algorithm to calculate the day of a week, of a week for a given date. And I've used this algorithm to develop a nasty Excel formula, which proves him right. Uh, you can uh, read the post on my blog and also download the file. And of course, who is if somebody is interested, I'll upload uh, also this link uh, to the uh, YouTube uh, uh, movie. Okay. Um, I want to show two methods of extracting a number from a string. Suppose you, we have this string on the left and, and cell A1. So if you use this as a quite a long one, but um, you can see that um, the text join, which was introduced in uh, 2019, helps us very much uh, to extract the number from the string, the original string. Okay, the number is of course 27. And uh, the old method was using this long combination, row, indirect, one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But a more sophisticated one, a more a new version, is using, of course, the sequence. Instead of this one, row, indirect, etc., you use only the sequence, which gets only the length of the of the uh, of the string and starts from the beginning. And their result is of course the same, which makes the, uh, the only difference is that it's more uh, practical and it's easier to use. And of course to use, and of course the, the, the uh, formula itself becomes much, much shorter. Okay. Um, something very interesting, I don't know, uh, are you familiar with the word palindrome in English? You know what a palindrome is? Can I, can I have your response, please? Because I can't hear you. Do I have to explain what a palindrome is? Same, same backwards. Okay, a palindrome is a word or phrase which can be read the same forward or backward. Sequence helps us decide whether the string in A2 is a palindrome. And this is a, fer, a very famous uh, phrase of a saying, which is attributed to Napoleon Bonaparte when he was exiled to the uh, Isle of uh, Elba. And the saying, uh, the, 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 uh, it says, Abel was I ere I saw Elba. So this sentence can be read from the beginning to the end at the same, with, at the, with the same letters, the same, uh, and the same, uh, um, um, the same commas or, or spaces between both backwards and uh, uh, forward. And I, I want to show, you, to show you this in a very, in a, in, a, in a small one, in a small file, which I've prepared in advance. I think I have some memory problems. Some memory problems. I, I'm, I'm afraid I can't show you. Okay, we we'll try anyway to do it. If, if we take the uh, the sequence, for example, I just want to uh, paint or select the sequence function. And if if I press F nine. You can see the numbers are going backwards. It's not one, two, three, four, five, till 25, which is the length of the, uh, of the string. It goes backwards. So it creates in memory the opposite string. And actually what the, the, the formula does, it checks to see if A2, the original string, is equivalent to exactly the one which is created in memory thanks to the sequence. Is this clear? No response. Yeah, right. Yes, is this clear? Yes, yes. Okay, good. I'm sorry, I wanted to show you a, a short uh, a part of the, uh, uh, of the uh, um, or maybe I'll do something else. I'll, I'll take this, the exact, the, the, the exact 
um, string, and I change only the last letter. For example, instead of A, I'll write B. And then this, this, the uh, formula says, no, it doesn't fit. It, that, it is not the same. So uh, you can check it for yourself. Of course, this file is going to be uploaded tomorrow to the uh, YouTube channel, and you can check for yourself and to see how this uh, formula is working. Okay. Okay, so far so good. And just a second, I have a memory problem. I need to ask, close some windows, some files. Okay, this one I can't. Okay. okay. Let's go back to the demonstration. We have finished the, the, the chapter which uh, deals with uh, text. I, re I remind you, we started, we started with the uh, sum without numbers, I mean array without an array, which, which actually the array is in memory, not on the sheet. Then we moved to uh, using the array, not inside the formula, in curly braces, but outside as a parameter which gives us, of course, a lot of uh, flexibility. The next one is manipulating text. I've given some examples of manipulating text. Some are practical, some are less. And the next one is some date tricks. Okay, the first one is how do we create 10 consecutive dates without the mouse? I mean, without uh, having to drag the number, the first date downwards. So that at least two methods to do it I'm not going to, uh, uh, to explain it. You can see for yourself. This is the first method using the sequence. This is a, a bit shorter a method, a bit shorter version, which uh, yields the same formula or the same results, okay? Sequence of 10 consecutive dates starting from today. So today, of course, is the 20th of uh, July, and you have here 10. Of course, you can change the number. If you want 10, 20 days, uh, whatever, starting from today, or you can start from any day. I think this is clear, quite clear. Can I go on? Or do you want me to linger and, and explain? No response. Is everybody happy, guys? Let me know in the chat or verbally if anybody wants any extra detail. Am I going too fast or is it okay? Is the pace good or not? I just I have to find out. Uh, I can tell you that the pace is excellent. Thank you. The pace is good, okay. Because there's somebody at my back, you know, his name is Christian. <laughs> he, he wants me. He wants me to finish. <laughs> okay. Well, no stress no, on my side. No stress. Okay. So uh, take your time. I'll give. I'll give you the uh, the the uh, microphone in, in in half past nine. Is it okay? Yeah, no worries, buddy. No problem. Okay. okay. As long as Ellen no. and the rest are staying with us, no problem. No problem. Okay. Okay, let's, let's take another uh, example of a, a date trick. Now I need the whole month, okay? So on, on, a, on the left, in column A, you have um, a list of all the days in July 21, okay? And this, the formula is very simple, sequence. Well, here, this, the formula supposes or Say, uh, that you know the number of days in the month and you know exactly which month and which year. So it's very easy. Okay, sequence, this is the number of cells that you want to fill and starting from this date. Okay, but suppose, suppose you don't know how many days there are in, in, in any month and you want it to be uh, parametrically which is a better method, of course. So you, run, you choose, for example, the, the, months, the month of uh, July and the year. And so the, 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 the formula now is a bit more complicated, but still very dynamic. So if I want to change to six to June, so of course we can see that we have only 30 days. If I want to change, for example, to, to check um, the leap year 2020, and you know, of course, that, that February on 2020 was 29 days and on 28, you can see the formula works perfectly. Okay, is this clear? Can I go on? I think so. If there's no any response. questions, I'll let you know. 
Yes, that, that's that's what I want to know. If there are any questions, if I don't hear anything, then I suppose that everything is clear and, and the, I go on continuing. Sure, sure. Yeah, there's no questions in the chat. At this okay, point. so far so good. Okay. So let's go to, um, this is another exa example of sequence of dates, which is also very practical. Suppose uh, you want to, uh, th this is the sequence of the, uh, uh, 12, day, 12 days, or the first day of each month of the year, starting from January till December. The date, the 1st of January, the 1st of February, etc. And this is the last day of the month. The last, the 31st of January, the 20th, and you don't have to calculate anything. This is a perfect formula. This is a, there's a trick, and the trick says, I don't know whether you're familiar with it or not, but if you take the month and add one, then you don't need, uh, then you don't need the, uh, the, the month's date. If the month is current plus one, for example, when, I, when we start January, instead of one, I write two. And then I don't need the, the, the date, it automatically generates the 31st. Okay, you can check it for yourself if you want. Okay, I'm advancing quite, quite quickly. Let's go to another one. More number tricks. Um, this is simple, I think, not very complicated. Um, two methods, one using the sequence, which is uh, the new one. And an, an, an alternative method is using the row. Row from one, one, colon. 100 gives you the first 100 integers starting from one. It's the same. These two formula formulae are equivalent okay i think one is a good formula and the other one is rubbish you think so <laughs> the row is rubbish it's got nothing to the do with you know, it, it is quite sometimes it's quite, quite quite practical especially if you don't have the 365 the office say 365 install installed on your computer yeah okay the same one the same one, but now the numbers are descending, not ascending. And uh, two methods, one using sequence, and the second one using the row, multiplied by one plus 101, and the results are the same. You can see for yourself, no tricks, very simple. Okay, let's go back. Um, now, uh, if you want a sequence of negative numbers, also very easy, okay? two versions of negative numbers, a sequence of the 12 negative numbers. So one formula is sequence 12 multiplied by minus one, minus one, or the sequence which uses the four arguments of the sequence. The first one, number of rows. The second one is number of, of columns. The third one is the, the first uh, item on the list. And the, the fourth argument is the increment or the step. Quite simple, I think. So I'm going on, I continue. Okay, um, sequence of fractions. What is, the, what is the advantage of fixed sequence of fractions? You write the first one and then you decide the size. For example, if you want the sequence of the first uh, a tenth of, of, of a number, you can, of course you can change it to 11 and then you have one and 1.1, 1 .1. they are not limited, of course. No problem. Okay. Uh, the same here. If you want one one uh, hundredth of a of a of a fraction, is the same method. No problem at all. I see. I seem to to have some memory problems. Okay. And the last one in which we have an, adv an advantage, of, a, a, a um, clear advantage, a clear advantage of circus over, over, over the uh, alternative functions or formulae. As you can see, the, the, on the left one, on the left, on the left column, column A, we have the square root of the sequence of one to 10. The same is applied here, but here there is a drag. What a drag. You have to drag it downwards until you reach number 10. 
So the results are the same, only this is much more convenient because you don't, you don't use the mouse, you just key in this, the function and it works perfectly, smoothly. Okay? Okay. Uh, one more example, one more simple example. One is the horizontal and the vertical, and then we will we'll go into something more sophisticated. Okay. Um, on the left one, we have a vertical array, simply by keying sequence five. On the right side, we have a horizontal array. And the only difference is that the first parameter is one, which means one, one a row and five columns. And another very, uh, another cool feature is this one. If you can see here, if I, if I key the sequence, the, the sequence with the row function anywhere on the sheet, for example, we start on row number 11, then I get the, the exact number of, of uh, items in the array, which is similar to the number of the row which I started. In this example, if I started in row number 11, I get 11 items in the array. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's talk about bidimensional. Okay, you can create an array of two columns by four uh, by four rows or two rows by four columns, only by exchanging two parameters, the row and the column. Very easy, very simple, very, uh, uh, <laughs> Practical, I think. Okay, now something very interesting. We all know that um, everybody knows index and match, right? Every, it's like uh, if you look up, nobody, I, nobody uh, would say that he doesn't know. At least uh, the participants in this in this uh, lecture, nobody would deny that the, the that the index match is quite easy to understand. Okay, so what do we have here? We have here on the left, we have a list of song, composant, and SK, SKU. For example, the song is Peace by John Lennon, and the SKU is 10123. And now we have, now we have, uh, we want to find the SKU, which is uh, equivalent or which is the one which matches the song Garden and the Keith Jarrett. And they can see on the left, the song Garden, the Keith Jarrett, the SKU is 10, 1, 10 128. And it's quite easy with the index and match to find the classical solution. And this is quite easy. But what I came out with is something more complicated, which uses, you won't believe, the square root with, with, with a sequence. And how does it work? If I have a few minutes to explain, because where I think that we are uh, we are beyond the time, is it okay, Alan? If I explain, or do you want me to send the file and you will be able to decipher it yourself? Uh, I think Alan? you had a little explanation. Can't hear you. To explain, Alan? Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Manny? Yes, we hear you. Can you hear me, Alan? Yeah, can you hear me? I hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> I don't think you can hear me. Alan? Alan? Yes, mate. Can you hear me? Uh, does somebody else want to talk? Yes, it's me. Uh, he lose the, the... Let me chat for a minute. Yeah. Just nod your head, Alan. He can see you. Okay. We can hear you, Manny. Okay. Um, I, I, did you understand? Can you explain the formula? That works. Yeah, explain away, mate. Okay, do, can I explain the formula, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the formula actually is very, uh, seems very complicated. Actually, the, 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 uh, the idea behind it is that you have two arrays and only one match multiplies the, uh, the correct number from array one by array two. So if it's the same number, it's like uh, the power of the number. In order to get the original number, you use the square root. 
Is this clear? <clears throat> so if I apply the same function here, this actually replaces, okay? The function is index. The index is the same, but all this part of the formula from square root to the end replaces the match match. All right. Do you want me to show it to you? For example, if I take this, this one, the sequence, and press F9, you can see the array is 0, 0, 0, 0, 5, 6, 0, 0, the one on the left, okay? Yeah. Column A. And then if I take the second sequence and multiply it, okay? F9, then you have 0, 0, 0, 0, 6, 0, 0. And we have, of course, in array one and array two are the same on the same line or the same row. Yeah. And if you we multiply six by six, we get 36. So all we have to do is just to take the square root of 36, which is always six. And as we can see, Gal and Keith is on the sixth row of the table of the data set. One, two, three, four, five, six, 128. Is this clear? <laughs> I think it's very sophisticated, very complicated, but uh, explain, uh, for me, Excel is for toying and playing. Yeah. Find new methods, not always very practical, not <laughs> always very easy, but very original, I think. Okay, is this clear? Now, now we go to the uh, something really interesting. Um, I call it the diamond diadem. Um, of course, you're British, uh, familiar with, with this, uh, this tiara, which is worn by queens in England for about more than like 20, 200 years, I think, since the 19th century. And this is like the uh, very interesting, something which is really, really, um, I call it better than power query. And I'm going to explain, okay? Please bear with me, but this is quite complicated. Okay. Um, before the lecture, I sent a, a request to Alan to send me the, the, um, the ASCII characters on his computer, because in every country and every uh, computer system, it might be different. Because I live in Israel, because we have, for example, can you follow me? Yeah. For example, if you look at the, at the end, you have the Hebrew alphabet from a character 224 to the end to 250 we have Hebrew but uh, in on Ellen's computer of course the ASCII character is a bit different and this is something not only very um, original it's also very practical and I explain why uh, as you all know sometimes you get uh, uh, files uh, from other systems for uh, from uh, and sometimes the file contains on uh, uh, has characters which are unprintable. For example, look at A2 or A3 or A4, etc., etc. And the first printable character begins in A33, which means, which means character number 33 in the sequence of 255 uh, 55, uh, characters in the ASCII character set. Okay, so Sometimes you want to clean such a, such a string from all the non-printable characters, but Excel has two functions to do it. One is the trim, and the second one is clean. Both are not so good at cleaning. And what I've done here is something very uh, sophisticated, and it cost, me, it cost me nine functions. These are the functions. Okay. These are the functions that participate in the in the original in the in the original um, formula. First of all, I prepared a table. I needed the table. I defined which kind of characters or, or, or groups of characters interest me. For example, I could choose the numbers only, or the uppercase English, or the lowercase English, or the Hebrew letters. And the numbers here are showing me the beginning or the number of. Uh, of the of the the, the, uh, the index 
of the character within the character set. For example, you can see the numbers begin with number 40, 48. Okay? 48 is zero, 49, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera until 57, until 57. And the uppercase English begin in with 65. Yes, you can see from 65 where the uppercase, et cetera, until 90. What I've done is this. This is the category that I want to take out of the long 255 characters string. I want only portions of it. And this is something which is very similar to a power query. For, for example, let me see. If I write here, I want only the numbers. I write Y here. What? Don't let me do it. Um, maybe I, I need to close some. Windows. But if, for example, here, you know, you have to. I'm I'm sorry, but I I, I can't uh, you know I can't do it. But you can trust me that this works. Because here the Y says, I want only the uppercase English. And this long and sophisticated formula, formula just makes sure that I get only the ones, only the, the, the groups of characters that I want. I'm sorry, I, I cannot prove it to you. I'm just I'm no problem, really mate. frustrated, but. People can not, I guess, test that out on the form yeah. when they get it. We trust you. I believe that I, when I uploaded the file itself, of course, you won't be able to see Hebrew letters, but you can change it to whatever you want. I don't mind if um, hmm. go back to Alan's. So this is the list that Alan sent me. So for example, if I want the, the characters, these characters, 221 or whatever, these are the last ones. You can choose the, this group. Of course, the numbers are the same. As you see, this is from Alan's file. From 65 to 90, you have the alphabet from A to Z. From 48 to 57, you have the numbers from zero to nine, etc. okay? I'm really sorry, I'm really, really sorry and frustrated that I cannot prove it to you because for some reason, I cannot do it, okay? But I believe that you trust me and you can check for yourself that it works perfectly. But if you put Y next to one of the, uh, the uh, pink rows, yep. you get, for example, the numbers. And you can do a combination of numbers and uppercase English or uppercase English and Hebrew letters or whatever. Okay, so the solution here shows you, this is, this is the formula, right? This is the formula, quite complicated. I'm using the XLOOKUP. Concat, if error, filter, mid, sequence, and then. And this couldn't, couldn't have been done without the assistance of our uh, uh, sequence. Okay? Maybe uh, we were, were a bit uh, in a hurry. Actually, I finished my demonstration or my demo with, as concerned, the, the sequence function. But the question now, since I promised something else, I promise to show you to show you all three shortcuts. Uh, Alan, do we have uh, enough time for that? Sure. Okay. The first one. I hope it it will work. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be very very frustrated. Okay. What we have here. Sorry. What we have here is a sequence of numbers with a sum. So this number in the cell B16 sums up says B2 to B14. Now the question is, how do you convert the formula in B16 into a value in B17? Does anybody know? And this is what you're supposed to do. If you are uh, uh, press control shift and the um, apostrophe, control, shift, apostrophe. And you, as you can see, this one has the formula and this one is a number, not the formula. 
okay? I don't know whether um, I, I, many of you are familiar with this trick, but if, if you know, ne never mind, but if you don't know, you learn something new. And another one is this one, okay? Now, the question is here, how do you convert the formula in B16 itself into a value without additional, additional um, cells? So as you can see before changing the, the, the formula, it's, about, it's the same, B sum of B2 to B14. Now, in order to uh, convert it, I key first of all F2, and then F9, and then enter. No, F2, F9, and enter. And as you can see, this is now a number and not a formula. See, before there was a formula, now, the, the uh, text formula doesn't it doesn't recognize what there is a, what what the contents of the cell is so it's na if I do I do undo then you you see what it was before the the previous condition or the previous situation of the, of the of the cell and the last one and this one I think <laughs> I haven't seen as I said before the uh, the uh, introduction I said to Alan. Uh, what, we, what we want to do is this. I'm located in, in any cell on the, on the uh, spreadsheet, and I want to go at the same row to the last non-empty column. How can this be done? Anybody has a clue? Because this I haven't seen nowhere. So it's very easy. You press the end, you press the end key, leave it and then press enter and as you can see the cursor now is in column p in the same row if i go here i do the same and enter the same goes to the last not and uh, last occupied column and this I, I this is i think something that i discovered myself i haven't seen it in any other place but maybe you've seen it before um, okay, this about wraps my uh, my whole lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any more questions, I'm willing to answer. No, oh, um, everyone loves a shortcut. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, a couple of people saying some of the shortcuts were certainly new. Uh, any questions, guys? Uh, well, many quick as we uh, switch presenters. Thank you very much, Amelia. It was uh, very, very interesting. Really. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Um, I'd like to have uh, your um, uh, impression or feedback. Maybe you yeah. can you can post it tomorrow on the uh, on the movie on the YouTube movie. Um, I'm sorry if it was too fast, too quick, because I had to do it in 30 minutes. I've done it in a, in a bit more, like more like uh, 50 minutes. I'm sorry, uh, Christian. It no was problem. very, very ingenious. And I was very impressed. Ingenious. Okay, thank you. Did no, you like I, it, by the way, I Peter? I have an exam question Peter? left for you, though. That, uh, Peter, is, is, this, is this Peter speaking? Yes. Okay. Yeah, can, can you hear me? Yes, that, uh, quite, the quite well. Sequence is also a, a key function in things like pivots and unpivots using lambda functions. Yes. B stack. Yes. Also, it's it's the the a sort of core functionality at the middle, yes. at the center of uh, a lot of new things. But I couldn't agree less. I couldn't. I I absolutely agree. No, I'm just no sorry. I, I if yes, if I had more time, I could have shown some more tricks and, and tips with the with the sequence. But I think we had it too, too squeezed in a short time. Maybe well, the next let, lecture let me is a challenge is, out that sequence okay. has made the idea of relative referencing obsolete. You no mm -hmm. longer need notation for A1, A2, A3, right. yeah. because you can scan the arrays with the, with the sequence. And so what I said is even, even more than that, as I, as I said a bit in the beginning, you don't even need an array. The array is in memory. You don't yeah, even need a sheet, the spreadsheet. This is to be group. controversial, and you're, you're, you're ahead of me anyway. I don't know. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, right, we're going to have to okay. switch presenters. Can you, um, many, if you, while we change presenters, if you if you pop open a chat, there's a lot of people saying thank you. Uh, I think there's a question in there as well. Okay. So, um, okay. Christian? I won't be able to. Uh, I won't be able to answer right now, you know, or else I'm, I'm going to miss uh, Christian's uh, lecture, yes. which is yes. okay. That's the problem we have. No worries. I can see uh, somebody said, Claire says that it was great, but we will need the file to explore. Of course, I'm going to upload the files. As I said at the beginning, great tricks. B. Patterson, Carlos Barbosa. No, no, that's not true. Why not? Yeah. Mr. Barbosa? It, uh... Oh, hi. Hi, um, hi, everyone. No, I think Peter said something about that you don't need to worry about referencing, like the, you know, the difference between uh, the cell column and the number of the row. But for some formulas, depending uh, if you're going to drag, uh, drag it to the, to the columns or drag it down, yeah, you definitely might have to lock the, uh, some references. Um, it's hard to say in words and, and speak, but if, uh, I can show you an example, but I can send it to you by mail. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's dollar signs are still essential. I think great examples though, great examples, uh, many. Okay, any more questions? I, I'm just uh, scanning through the, uh, to the comments. Mind blown. <laughs> okay, thanks for the info. Brown, Claire, we've read. The goldfish remember keyword shortcuts better than I do. Peter. Uh, cool shortcuts, learn something new today. Good. This is what this is the idea, by the way, Christian. Yeah, I know. Thank they, you. They, they used to say they, they say that a, a day in which you don't learn anything new is a wasted day. Okay. okay. Totally new to me. Okay. I knew control to repeat the content, but above, but not adding shift. I don't see any references to the uh, con to the uh, sequence. Okay. Ah, Madam, my Madam, yes. This is another very famous uh, um, palindrome, Madam, my Madam. Uh, well, you can play and toy with it you, and check that you know, everything that I've shown you, especially the last one, which wasn't very successful, unfortunately, for some reason, which I can't uh, still, still decipher. And this is very, like, for me, this is the most important thing of the whole lecture, this one. Okay, filter, filter out unwanted mm -hmm. characters. This is so dynamic in Excel, it's as if you're using the Power Query. I beseech you, please try it. Please toy with it, play with it, and see if what I say is true or I'm just telling you lies or whatever. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, it's, Any uh, more questions which are not uh, listed, listed on, on the chat? Present as many. Need to get Christian in. Okay. Okay, I stop the share. Okay. Thank you, Mini. Thanks a lot. Thank you. If there, if there are, okay. we'll make sure we share uh, a copy of the chat after Mini, so you can see some of this stuff. Good. Good idea. Um, also, guys, Christian, feel free to get cracking or right in the chat, maybe. But any remaining questions, you can always put them on the Meetup page. Uh, maybe we can follow discussions there also. Uh, Cool. Christian, go for it, my friend. Yeah, let's go. Hi, everyone. And, uh, thanks again, Alan and uh, Thea, for inviting me to talk. Uh, I, exactly like many, I'm a bit nervous and uh, a bit uh, frightened of, of this big audience. Uh, I never presented to such a big audience and uh, such a knowledgeable audience, but uh, let's hope everything will be okay. A uh, few words about me. Uh, I'm Christian Angel. I live in Romania. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer at the base. Then uh, I was a project management professional. I still am. But then back in 2014, I discovered the Power Query, Power Pivot, and I transformed myself from a pro project manager to a data guy. I don't know what I am for now, but I'm I'm a data guy. I like to to play with data and um, get insights because I'm uh, lazy. No, I mean I'm very efficient. 
I'm not lazy, I'm efficient. This is why I, I always try to learn something new uh, to do my work uh, easier and faster. I have some uh, credentials from Microsoft, but they are not very important. The important thing is uh, that the first one that I got was on Excel because I really love Excel. This is how I started. <clears throat> the high level agenda for today uh, will be about the merging part of Power Query, the joints in Power Query. It will be a pretty easy uh, session for the more seasoned uh, Power Query users, but uh, I hope it will be a good one for the more beginner ones. And I'll try to cover first the standard six type of joints that are in Power Query. There are two additional types that are not standard, but they are easy to do uh, the full anti-join and the cross-join. Uh, we'll cover also the fuzzy matching during <clears throat> any of the joints. And uh, I have some demos uh, getting the previous row using merge in Power Query, doing some approximate match, the, the equivalent of uh, lookup in Excel with approximate match and some self merging joints. The, Objective of the session is to ensure that you get the main concepts when working working with the joints and the, you can continue learning and have a starting point. So what are joints and why do we care? <clears throat> First of all, uh, not sure if everybody knows uh, where can we find Power Query. Power Query is an add-in for Excel 2010 and 2013 and it's embedded in Excel 2016 and Office 365. It's also the technology, the ETL, the extract transform load technology behind the Power BI. <clears throat> and it's more and more present in uh, other um, Microsoft products. And uh, it's a very good um, skill to have, let's say like this. So joints inside the Power Query are the process of combining two queries together, either in Excel or from external sources using the merge operation that we have in the Power Query. For experienced uh, database users, it's the well-known joints in, uh, in database world. But for Excel users, they can be um, assimilated to the VLOOKUP, usage of VLOOKUP getting uh, data from another table. Well, starting 2019, it's also XLOOKUP for the <clears throat> newer, new users of uh, Excel. Using the merge uh, helps enriching a table but by adding new data. And uh, one short example, it would be when you have um, I don't know, a product table and a category table, you want to have everything together because you have a category ID and you just do the, the merge. Uh, using merge, you can return multiple columns in a single query, not uh, unlike VLOOKUP who's bringing only one. Uh, you can do lookups based on multiple conditions or multiple columns, uh, avoiding the eternal additional columns with uh, concatenations that uh, are usually done in Excel when you have multiple conditions and uh, can compare lists from uh, two tables. Uh, a merge query creates a new query from two existing ones. And uh, there are two types of uh, merges, the inline merge and the intermediate merge. The inline merge, uh, merges uh, new data into the existing query. Uh, the intermediate merge uh, is creating a new query for each merge. I'll show you in, uh, in the demo. Uh, what do I mean by this if it's not very clear only by explanations? Merges uh, are done using the user interface. And this is the big thing that uh, came in um, Power Query, you can use the user interface, the UI for most of the things and uh, you don't have to know 
the M language <clears throat> that it's behind Power Query and you still get at least 70% of what Power Query can do. But uh, it's, uh, you, you need to know some small tricks. Uh, for example, uh, when you're doing merges, the columns must be the same type. So if you have a, a column of uh, numbers and uh, trying to merge it with a column with a type like uh, text, so number and text will not match. Either they are both numbers or they are both text. This is something that we uh, have to keep in mind. Uh, as I told you, Power Query has six standard uh, join types, and the default one is the left outer join. Uh, this um, user interface, print screen, I made it just to make it clear and explain it. What does it mean? And we'll see it later. What's the left table and the right table? Because it's pretty uh, confusing for a new user talking about the left table and right table when the user interfaces are showing top tables and bottom tables. The top table, the first table that you are selecting in the merge uh, window is the left table and the bottom, uh, bottom table, it's actually the right table. So this needs to be clear for the, for the beginners because for me at the beginning, it was pretty uh, difficult to remember. And uh, when I first heard about uh, joints in Power Query, uh, some of the videos that I watch or some of the articles were talking about the main table and lookup table. Some of them were talking about left table and right table. Some of them were, were talking about different things. So the, in the user interface, the one on the top is the left table the one that you want to do uh, the uh, join kind on. And the bottom one is the right table. As I told you, the six uh, join types that are present standard in uh, Power Query are the left outer join, right outer join, full outer, inner join, left anti-join and right anti-join. The print screen on the top of the slide, it's actually taken from the data flows uh, in Power BI, which is uh, having or leveraging uh, Power Query online. <clears throat> I like the picture and I didn't want to build other Venn diagrams because these are pretty self-explanatory, but we'll go in uh, details when we are doing the demo on all of them. There are two additional type of joints that uh, are pretty useful the full anti-join, which is doing the, uh, bringing together the non-matching rows from the left table and the right table, the primary or related table, and the cross-join who is returning the Cartesian product of rows from, uh, from both tables. So for each of the rows on the left tables, we will get all the rows uh, on the related table. But uh, we'll see it in the demo which is about time. Let's switch to the demo. And uh, I wanted to do it uh, with some really useful uh, links for everybody who wants to learn Power Query. This is my top 20 uh, masters in Power Query and uh, I didn't want uh, anybody to get upset. This is why I sorted them alphabetically by last name. So this is how we are starting and then we, we go forward. So let's start with the left join. I, so that nobody gets uh, upset, I just added a column here with a random between zero and one and selected only some of the, <clears throat> some of the masters. And I have two tables here. One table, let's say we have uh, the left table with the first name, last name, and the Twitter handle for uh, each of the four query masters. And we have a separate table with uh, the 
links on uh, social media and uh, the online presence. This is how I called it uh, for all of them. But not all of the um, people on the left, left table are on the right table and uh, we would like to find out who are the ones uh, that uh, are here in the, in the right table. So let's open Power Query. First of all, this is how I, I uh, started. If you want to bring the data into Power Query, just go to the data tab and get it from table.range. And uh, this is um, opening the Power Query editor. I hope I won't have problems. No, it's working. This is creating uh, another query because I, I already imported uh, the table. The table it's called PQ Masters. It's this one. So we can delete the one that uh, I just uh, added. And let's make it bigger. Is it visible enough, Helen? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So <clears throat> first of all, we have to bring the two tables inside Power Query. This is how we are doing it, data from table range, and we are getting the two tables. It's these two at the beginning. Yeah, by the way, uh, the way to increase the font here as a tip that I've learned uh, in another meetup, it's Control Shift Plus. Inside Power Query Editor, Control Shift Plus will increase the fonts. So I'm getting the, the first uh, query, the PQ Masters table, and then I'm getting the second uh, table, the online presence. This is how I call the table. Maybe it's not the most uh, inspired, but uh, this is how I ended up with. And for each of them, I added a single step, just change the type for, for the columns. These are the steps on the right, are the steps that uh, Power Query is recording for each of the operations. So uh, we could go here on the home tab on merge queries and merge directly the query, or we can merge them as new. But <clears throat> this would May, this would create the first step in the new created query. If we go with merge queries as new, pretty difficult to read. This is why first thing that I did, I right clicked the main query, the left table and referenced it. So I created a new query, which has the source is the PQ masters. This is how I did all the merges uh, and all the joints in the demo. <clears throat> I'm deleting this one because I want to open the default joints. So the left outer joint. First step, it's referencing the PQ masters. And then the next step was to merge the queries. It's this one. If we go to see the user interface, pressing the merge queries here will open this user interface, this one. Unfortunately, this one, if I'm pressing Control Shift Plus is not uh, increasing in font, but uh, I hope it's uh, visible enough. So when you are, uh, when this user interface opens the left outer, the um, top table, it's the PQ masters. And we have to choose from the list here what is the query that we want to use as a lookup? And uh, for this one, I'm adding the online presence, which is not referenced because I need it only for the lookup. And we are selecting the column that uh, the key column in both tables that we want to do the merge on. So for the PQ masters, I'm selecting the Twitter handle and the online presence also the Twitter handle. Pressing OK will get us a new column of uh, nested tables. 
And in each nested table, we have, if we click on the white space near the table and not directly on the table, we have a preview here with what was the match for that specific row in the second table. So if we go and see the previews, see for this one, for Miguel Escobar, we don't have the Twitter handle in the online presence table, neither for uh, Imke nor for Mike, but for some of them we have. And this is the our goal to find for uh, the left outer join will find everything on the left table that matches to the right table. Next step is to press these two uh, splitting arrows here and uh, expand the new table. We could expand it on uh, all of them, on all the columns that are here in the table, but uh, we don't want it. And I already did it. I expand it. Actually, it seems that I did. Uh, this is how uh, the results of the query are looking like. And the next step would be just to sort the rows based on uh, last name, like I did before, and then close and load and load the query here. It should be already here. Yeah, this one. This is the result of doing, it's exactly like doing a VLOOKUP here. Yeah, we can test this. We look up. We are looking this one in this table. Getting the first one with an exact match. So it's exactly what we found here uh, for Matt Ellington, Oz. We found uh, a match. Or Win Hopkins, Matt Mason, Ken Pauls, and uh, Minda. So this is the simplest uh, join in Power Query and the default one. <clears throat> Let's delete the column and go to the next one. Table columns. No, it's not working. Why is it not working, Alan? I don't know why it's not working. I won't uh, give it to you. So next one, the next join is the right join. The right join, let's go again into the queries and edit it. Any questions on, on the left join? Nothing in the chat. If you've got any questions, guys, feel, feel free. No, it's clear. Okay. Right out of join. So right out of join, we are starting exactly the same. We are referencing the PQ masters table. We are pressing the merge here and getting the merging columns. We are doing again a merge based on the Twitter handle, but this time on the join kind here, this is why I didn't even show it to you uh, on the left uh, join because it was the default one. But here for the right join, we have to choose the right outer join, which is bringing all the matches from the second or the right table matching from first. Next step is to expand the, the table and again, sort it so we can compare it correctly. And we sorted it this time by uh, two columns. And this is something that I wanted to show you. If, uh, yeah, let me delete this one and do it live with you. I want to sort the result based on this column on last name and then based on the Twitter handle. I'm not sure if it's busy, visible, but here we have a one and a two here, which is showing 
I don't know what's happening when I'm zooming in. Here, there is a small two here showing the order of the sorting. This is uh, available, this kind of uh, sorting is available in any step. It's not related to, to the joints, but uh, if you want to do multiple sorting, this is how you see that uh, the order of sorting is done. First column that was sorted and the second column. Again, loading the table is doing exactly what uh, expected. It keeps all the rows from the lookup table, the right table, the second or the bottom table. This is why I told you there are many names on many sites on uh, referring to joints and it's keeping all the rows from the second table and bringing only the matching rows from the first table, from the left table. The next one is the full outer join. The full outer join starts basically the same, referencing the PQ masters. Let me zoom it in. So the first step that I did, I just referenced the PQ masters here and uh, renamed it. You saw when you reference a query, it just put the same name with a number between parentheses. And uh, I did uh, renaming on all of them. So I have them um, organized here. So referencing the left table, basically doing the merge by clicking merge queries here. And again, selecting the key column between the two tables, but this time selecting the full outer join all rows from both tables. So this time, regardless of the um, appearance of the records on the left or the right table, I need all of the rows from both tables. Next step is to click this uh, two headed arrow and uh, expand it. This is the result with everything. Again, I sorted everything by last name and the Twitter handle. And I loaded, I don't want to close the query editor anymore, but here you see the result loaded in, uh, in Excel, combining all the data from the left table uh, with the right table and uh, clearly seeing where are gaps in um, any of the tables. The inner join is the next one. The inner join basically brings only the matching rows from both tables. And the <clears throat> process of doing inner join, it's exactly the same referencing the first query, which is not necessarily something that we have to do, but it's for me, it's easier to do it like this because uh, if I really want to uh, do something else with the initial query or reference it, that use it in different queries, by referencing it, uh, I keep that one alone and I can reuse it afterwards. But uh, we can do the merge directly in, uh, in the original query that we load from Excel. Next step. It's again, pressing the merge, selecting the columns that uh, the key columns uh, in both tables. So the Twitter handle in uh, the left table and the Twitter handle in the right one and uh, choosing inner join. Inner join will bring us only the matching tables. Uh, if you see here, the number of rows reduced from 12, how many we had on the left one reduced already when doing the inner join to only the number of matching rows and expanding the data <clears throat> will get us the um, records uh, from the second table. And again, sorting, sorting the rows, it's uh, just for uh, seeing them nicely in, uh, in Excel afterwards. 
there's a new one, new in terms of name, because uh, you can do it also in uh, SQL using some um, um, select and uh, some uh, tricks in Excel, in uh, SQL, the left anti-join. The left anti-join uh, query will bring us only the rows that are present in the first table and that are not present in the second one. The process, again, it's referencing the PQ masters um, query, merging the tables, but merging the tables, uh, this time choosing the left anti-join from here, which will bring us, if we go here and uh, see what the merge brought us in these tables, all of them are null because uh, this is the purpose of the left anti-join. Bring only the rows that are present in the left table and not in the right table. Expanding it will bring us nulls for each of them and sorting it, uh, it's the next step that <clears throat> helped me see it uh, correctly in, um, in Excel. And it's, there's another one, the right anti-join, which is doing basically the same thing, but uh, this time this is keeping only the rows that are present in the second table on the right-hand side and not present in, uh, in the left, uh, left hand side, uh, left table. The process is the same, just referencing the table doing the merge and choosing the choosing the right outer, the right anti-join. And the result might be um, tricky for most of uh, Excel users. Normally we would say, well, something's broken. Well, it's not broken. Always, but always when we are doing a right anti-join, this will be the intermediate result because we want to keep only what's in the online presence table on the right hand side table, which is not present on the first one. If we click near to the table, we see that uh, here we have a preview of what's on the, what's only in the second one and doing the expand will bring us the data from the right table and uh, nothing nulls, which are loaded as blanks in uh, Excel. Uh, the good thing about Power Query and uh, talking about uh, getting scared is that uh, Power Query is recording every step that you are taking here. And uh, it's almost impossible to break anything. So if you are starting now uh, playing with Power Query, don't be afraid of clicking the buttons. Clicking the buttons, even if uh, something is... Uh, not as you expected, you can just go and delete the step and uh, this is it, it's not a problem. So don't be afraid to, to try everything. You can click all the buttons, nothing will break, the source will be intact. So in Power Query, don't be afraid to click the buttons. This is something that I've learned from Ken Pulse and uh, only by experimenting and uh, playing around <clears throat> you start to, to learn more. So these are the loaded tables for the inner joints, the left anti-joints and the right anti-joint. And these are basically the standard, the six standard uh, joint types that uh, are available in, uh, in Power Query. Any questions until now? Uh, there was uh, a couple questions. Please. Um, one of them was just to say, uh, you know, going back to the uh, original left join, right join, yeah, stuff, uh, or just saying about like, is there any difference between doing a right join versus just switching the tables in the UI? No, no, <laughs> this is it's exactly the same thing. You could uh, always use the left join, just uh, choosing first the right table. And uh, it, it will give you the same result. 
Cool. And it's it's the same for the left anti joint and the right anti joint, depending on uh, which side of the whether you are choosing first or second, the tables, these are defining your left and right. So if you are just changing them, the, the result will be the same. Yeah. Cool. And okay. The question was just about whether you can create custom joins, but that's not really something for you right now. I guess. <laughs> custom, custom joins? <laughs> yeah, it's just like creating your own joins. Uh. Yeah, next one. Uh, there is another... Uh, interesting uh, join that uh, we can do from uh, the right and the uh, left and right anti-join. Normally, if you are doing, for example, um, comparison between two lists, uh, two lists uh, in an accounting system, for example, I don't care much about the matching rows there. I'm uh, more concerned on the differences, what's different, what's only in the first one and not in the second one, what's only in the second one and not on the first one. This type of join, it's, uh, it's called unofficially the full anti-join, which is showing the, uh, this is the final result. This brings in all the rows from both left and right join, but uh, that don't have a match in uh, in the other table. And the way this is done, it's uh, not as you would expect normally. This is not having a, a user interface for doing it, but it's really easy. And I think it's already visible here. To do a full anti-join, I'm just refer referencing the left anti-join, this one that I built earlier and I don't merge anything, I append. So I'm clicking, I'm going here on append queries and I'm appending, this would add another step, but uh, I will edit the settings here. So appending two tables, so doing a merge through an append, I'm just appending the right anti-join to it and then sorting everything. The only big thing that we have to be very careful when we are doing this full anti-join is that we are, when we are doing um, appends in Power Query, the column names in both uh, left anti-join and right anti-join have to have the same name everywhere. If one of the columns has a different name, it will appear as an additional column here with data only for the table that uh, it is coming from. So this is a big thing that we have to uh, be careful on. The column names needs to be the same. There is another one. Uh, so this is the full anti-join. This is, there is another type of uh, join, the cross join. The cross join, uh, it's, Something that uh, I did separately. No, actually it's the same PQ masters. Yeah. So the cross join, it's actually matching each of the rows on the left table with all of the rows on the online presence here. For example, we are thinking that uh, each of the Power Query masters will follow all the other ones on the online presence table on the on Twitter. So how can we do it to do the pair of uh, units? So I want that Matt Ellington have all the names uh, on the online presence from all the other guys. There are two uh, ways of uh, doing it. One of them is just referencing each of the tables. So I'm doing a reference on the left table and I'm adding a column, just going to add columns and add a very complicated formula, putting a one or whatever, a character, doesn't matter much. And it also doesn't matter much the 
the name. But we should put it as a number, whole number. Change type. Something broke here. Yeah, and I know why. We are referencing also the second table that we want to uh, do the Cartesian product, the cross join. And we are also adding from here, add the column, custom column, another very complicated uh, formula with a one. And we are doing the first version of the cross join. So this is what happened when I clicked directly the merge here. So here, if I'm doing, I'm in the, um, in this query, and I'm put, pressing directly the merge queries as new, I will get a new query, a new step with a new query that has the first step directly the formula for the join. So if I'm doing it here with a zero eight online presence, I'll show you by choosing the custom column that I added. So if you are thinking about it, I'm trying to bring for every row in the master's table, all the rows in the online presence table that are having a one. So we are getting this type of query. here on the first step, which is having for each of the rows on the left table, all of the rows on the second table. I see a problem here and I don't know. Oh, I know what. This is the new column that I added and it, it cannot be, uh, the NA is not uh, there. We can delete this one and we don't care. This is the VLOOKUP that I did in, uh, in Excel. So you saw that I added an additional step in, uh, in my existing query and it just added it here. And now going to the next one, we want to expand everything from this table. So for each of the rows in the existing table, because this one that I built, I had it in the right table. I'm getting all the rows from the second tables. So when I'm expanding it, everything will blow. And first time it might be also scary, but we want to make sure that uh, in this list, if the first, the MVP or the PQ master on the left, it's also on the second uh, list. I don't want to have a, a match here between uh, this Twitter handle from the left and this one. So I'm adding a custom column, which is very simple. Just checking whether the Twitter handle, this one from the left table is equal to the Twitter handle, handle that uh, I brought with the join. The result should be true or false in this new column. I'm filtering out the, the ones that are, uh, I'm keeping only the false ones because if you are checking this one, let's go back one step. For Matt Ellington here, I had Matt in both of the tables. So when I did the match, I'm not trying to do, uh, he cannot follow himself on uh, Twitter. So I have to check this one. If this is true, I have to take out the trues and keep only the false and then remove the, the checking column. This is the reason why when I added the custom column, I didn't modify the name. So sometimes the, the name of the columns doesn't matter much. This one remained as custom one because in the end I knew I will remove it and uh, this is it. <clears throat> and the result it's the match from all the tables. Uh, 
let me open it again. This one, here I have only a few ones, but uh, the PQ masters uh, in the final file that I'll send you, I'll have everything. I use the same thing. The result is that for each of the rows in the first table, I have all the columns except himself if he was there in the second table. But as you can see here, we have a custom column and why? Because this one is not coming from here. This is the result of another version of the cross join. And actually is this one. There is an easier method that I've learned from uh, Oz du Soleil. And I'll show you how it's done. It's much easier. We don't need to add additional uh, columns. Let me zoom in. So again, we are just referencing the PQ masters and we add a custom column. In the custom column, we're just putting the name of the query, which is actually the second table. So here we are not doing anything else. We are just putting the name of the query and the name of the query is the online presence. The result will be an additional column, which is having all the rows from the online presence for each of the, the rows that uh, I had. And then it's a matter of just expanding it and doing the same uh, verification whether uh, the Twitter handle that uh, we had in the left table is also present in the second one. And for some of them, for the, the rows that were matching, uh, this is true. We take it out and this is the column name that uh, appeared there because I forgot to delete it. Any questions about full anti-join and cross joins? I don't believe so, but in the chat anyway. Okay, let's move forward. We have different data sets here. I just modified a bit the data sets and uh, I kept the, the first table, but I modified the second one. We don't have the Twitter handle in the second one. So what do we do? We need to bring to get the um, site or YouTube channel in this one in a new table like this. How do we do it? Well, we go again with multiple columns with data table from range and load it into Power Query. It's this one. So if you see here in the table design table, the name of the table, it's uh, multiple columns of MCJ masters. And this one, it's MCJ websites. These two tables, I already loaded them into Power Query. So just let's go and edit them. Control Shift Plus. So this is the result, yeah. just getting the data from uh, Excel on the this table, MCG Masters. This is the second one. MCG websites. For this one, I also uh, added a change type step. And this is how we do it. First one, we are referencing the MCG masters. Notice that when we are referencing a query, which is starting with a number, we have to follow the hash notation. Uh, if you saw on any other joints when we were referencing a query like this one, not this one, this one is exactly the same, like left outer join. The first step here is just referencing this query. So the first step in this query 
is actually the result of PQ masters, but because the name of the query is not starting with a number and it doesn't have a space, it's very easy to uh, see it like this. As long as we have uh, queries that are starting with uh, numbers or they have spaces in the names, even inside the advanced editor uh, for the steps that are here, and I'll show, I'll show you later this one, the, f the referencing the name is done doing uh, hash quotes, name of the query and closing quotes. This is the reason why this, uh, this one, it appears like this and uh, on the basic ones, it appeared directly with the name of the query. So we do a merge again, using the same merge on the home ta table on the home tab. When we are doing a normal merge based on a single column, we get some results, but what do we, what do we get? For some of them, these are okay. We are expanding them and we, we have them uh, correctly. But we also have a multiple column joint here doing the merge if we have problems with, for example, uh, Matt is having two, uh, two entries in the second table. Let me open this one. When it's doing the multiple column joints, uh, we have to keep in mind that the name of the columns does not matter, but the orders of the columns that we are pressing matters a lot. So. Uh, normally in Excel, if we would do a VLOOKUP based on these two columns, we would need to create an additional column and concatenate them or use text join and put some delimiter and do the same thing in the lookup table and then do the VLOOKUP. Well, Power Query gives us the possibility to do the join based on multiple um, columns. And this is very easy. See, if I clicked somewhere else, everything uh, flipped, but I'm clicking this one will match this one. Oh, no, I don't have to do this one. So the order of clicking the column names, it's very important. The name of the columns doesn't matter much. And we get exact matches for all of them because I left the left outer join, uh, the default one in place. So we, we got the same uh, results and then just expanded and uh, sorting uh, the final name, but by first name and the last name. See here it's the one and the two, the small ones. Not sure if they are really visible Uh, there is another one, another type of uh, matching. In this one, I have different data set. Let me show you. It's thinking a lot. I have two tables. Again, the left one with uh, unique names here and the right one where uh, we have data uh, and we want to bring uh, based on multiple columns, the site. I'm just loading each of the tables. So if I'm showing you here, the, this is called the fuzzy masters. And this is called the fuzzy websites and uh, I'm doing, loading them. I already loaded them here.
Control shift plus. So this is the first one, the fuzzy masters. I loaded also the fuzzy websites here. And then just doing a reference on the fuzzy masters. Notice the name of the query, it's fuzzy masters and not using the hash codes, name codes. And I'm trying to do a merge. Let me delete the existing ones because now we have the final solution here and I want to show you what's happening. So doing a normal merge based on first name, last name, first name, last name, it's exactly what we did uh, in the previous example. And notice here on the bottom, the, select the selection matches five out of nine rows from the first table. But why? Has anybody noticed something here on the website? The columns, the names are not the same. See, Ors du Soleil is on the left one, but somebody else gave me this list and it was manual entries, let's say it like this. And uh, the case is not the same for Oz. For uh, Gasper, the special characters that are on the first list are not present in the list. For Matt Mason, some, the person who gave me the list called it Matthew Mason. For uh, Chris Webb, he called it Christopher Webb. So when I'm doing the join based on first name and last name, first name and last name, I'm getting only five matches. Let me zoom it in. Edit. So I'm getting only five ones and I'll show you the results. I'm expanding this one and it's exactly what I told you. For Oz du Soleil, nothing is appearing in the, from the second one because the casing was different. For Gasper, because we have on the first table, the special Slovenian characters and which were not present in the second one, it doesn't appear. For Matt Mason, because it was Matthew Mason and we were doing the match on both columns, it doesn't appear. For Chris Webb, the same problem. How do we fix this? Here on the merge queries, there is an option to use fuzzy matching. If we're pressing the fuzzy matching option here on the bottom, notice this time the selection matches seven out of nine rows. Let's see which are the, the seven ones. Uh, this time, Oz du Soleil, so the casing, Power Query guessed it correctly and it's, it's correct. For Gasper, the same thing, but we still have two names that are not matching completely because Matt is not the same with Matthew and Chris is not Christopher, like I got the list on. So what do we do? Well, we have to prepare a translation table something like this. This is how it's called. Let me show you when it's finishing. We have a table here. We created a separate table, a kind of uh, translations, transformation tables that always has, the, uh, has to have the from and to column. We load this into uh, Power Query going with uh, queries and connections from table range or in newer versions, you can right click and get data from table slash range, but I already loaded it. So it's already in uh, our query. So let's go back, uh, edit. 
and we will try to use this translation table because this one <coughs> merge queries, edit queries. Now, before going to, to the translation table, I want to show you something else. If you click this one, fuzzy matching options, see there is a similarity threshold, which is an optional parameter. In Power Query, uh, the default similarity threshold it's at 0 0.8 if we modify this one to a 0 0.5 for example we still get only seven out of nine matches but if we move it lower to 0 0.4 we get nine out of nine matches so it seems that we solved the problem let's see now that we have them merge Please be careful of on the number of rows that we have here when we expand it. If we expand it, we had nine rows, now we have 10 rows. Why? Because we have we had a low similarity threshold. Matthew Mason. Mason. With Matthew Mason. But also, it was matched with Matt Ellington. So be very careful when you are playing with the similarity threshold because this might uh, induce some uh, additional problems, errors. You can get uh, additional rows and uh, if you have long tables, you might not see it. So this is not an option. This is why we need the translations table that we loaded, the transformation table. So we go again to fuzzy matching options. We keep delete this and keep it to 0 0.8. See, the option indicates how similar. If you go over the eye here, you get all the, some additional information. But there is a, this one, the transformation table optional. And if you hover it, uh, it's clearly stated that uh, you should have a from and a two columns. This is why I build it like this. And we choose the transformation table, which is called transformation. Very complicated. This time I'm getting uh, selection matches nine out of nine rows. And when we expand the fuzzy matching, we get the right results for each of them. And then we removed uh, the uh, additional columns and we kept only, only what was interesting. So this was the fuzzy matching. Next one, we have only a few more. I think we, we are late, right, Alan? Uh, yes, mate. Okay, I'll try to, to speed up and uh, I'll skip the, the last file, the additional file that I have for a future presentation. So let's show you quickly the approximate match, how we can do an approximate match. We have a scenario. The scenario is like this. I have a list of items with reception dates and the quantities. So I'm receiving item eight, two pieces on the 3rd of January, 2021. Separately, I have a table with the prices in Euro, but I need to get something like this, the unit prices in uh, US dollars in the end. And I also have uh, FX rates table with conversion from, for several uh, currencies, not only Euro to USD separately. So I'm just adding these three tables with right click get data from table range into Power Query and do something like this. This one, it's called reception. Yeah, maybe we can continue on uh, Saudi Arabia for a different session for us, I saw that. 
So I just loaded uh, the three tables, reception, prices, and uh, uh, FX rates. On, F on uh, FX rates, this is the initial table. I changed the types for everything uh, to be decimals. I removed everything else and I kept only the date when this uh, rate was applying on. So this was my biggest problem. I have only the starting date, uh, only the changing day of the rate. I'm renaming the column as rate and filter only for 2021 because I know the receptions are on 2021. And now just to do the receptions, this is what I did. I just referenced the receptions. I merged the queries uh, on items to get the prices. See here, I'm just uh, merging the source, the previous step uh, with the prices. I expanded it to, to get the prices in Euro. And then this is the big thing that uh, it's different than merging. I'm not doing uh, uh, a normal merge to get the, the rates. I'm appending a query. So let me show you. On the table that has the unit price in euro, I'm appending the FX rates, FX rates. And this one, in order to append it, I told you at the beginning, only the matching columns will match completely here. So I have the reception date. Uh, of course, I don't have the unit price in euro because it's not in the uh, FX rates, but I have the rate. So if you go back to the FX rates, you saw that uh, I renamed, this is one of the crucial, this is the crucial step in this uh, technique, renaming the matching column that you want to append. So instead of date, like it was before, I, met, I renamed it with reception date. So it matches with my uh, reception date in the reception table. And because these are not matching, of course, in the rates table, I don't have anything as items. And in uh, this one, I don't have anything uh, in terms of rates. The next logical step is to sort all the dates from uh, ascending. Sorting all the dates ascending, it's not enough to uh, fix my problem. I also need to sort the items ascending. See, I have a one here and a two here, because in this case, if you check the, this one, on the 27th of February, the first date is the one with a no, which came from the FX rate. And uh, I have a reception on the 27th for item five, but I always have the no in front of the item and I always have the rate above the uh, list of items that I'm interested in. The next step is just right click the column and fill down. So fill down, this is what I did here. And I filled all the rates for everything uh, until the next rate. I filtered out all the nulls here because I don't care about them anymore. And I have the rate for each of the receptions and the price in euro. And from here, it's just an easy multiplication to do it the unit price in euro uh, multiplied by the rate and get the value in an additional column in the end. And this is how we are doing an approximate match. So for everything in, uh, in this one, using the rates that are that are coming only in certain days, we can have the final prices using the rates, the corresponding rates here. There is another short one. I'll show you this one. It's a bit more advanced, but uh, I think it's good to, to see it for everybody. It's a self-merge join, doing a cross-join uh, differently. I'm not saying this is not the most uh, easy way to do it, 
but you could use this technique in uh, in other uh, in other queries that you have. So first thing, uh, we want to do a cross join again between the first table and the second table. So for the first table, we need to get all the dates, all the rows from the second table. First thing is to reference the PQ masters. We are adding a column exactly like we did before, but we do a next step. So normally when we are doing a step here, we are referencing the previous step. What I did here was to add a new step, a custom step. You'll see it right away. The custom two is my step and see this one is referencing the previous step, the masters. But I don't want to see the masters table. I want to see the online presence. This is what I did here. So I'm changing manually the step here. I'm tinkering a bit with the M code. So I'm deleting the step that I added and keep the original one that I did. So I replaced the masters with the online presence. And now I got the entire online presence query, the one that uh, we had at the beginning here. For this one, I added an, also a step. So I call it uh, not rename steps. I just renamed the step and uh, adding the column. See, it's just a simple table dot add column with a one exactly like I did before. See, nothing very complicated. And this is the tricky part. And I'll delete it from here so I can show it to you directly. Now we are doing a merge. We go to merge queries. And from here for the second table, we are doing, we are choosing the cross join V3, the self merge. And we select the custom column to do the merge on. Normally when we are doing it like this, we get the same results for everything. So for uh, the column with table, nested tables that uh, was added, I'm getting the same results for all of them. So I'm getting exactly the same data, but I don't want to have this data. I want to have the data which I had here in this step, which is the first table. So for this one, I'm just going here inside the M uh, step that the Power Query did for me. And on the websites, I'm just, see uh, here, I'm just, let me modify it a bit so it's much more visible. I'm doing a merge on this query on this column, this query on this col column, but I don't want to have it on uh, on websites with websites. I want to have it on masters, this one, uh, this one. So I'm just modifying it manually and press okay. So, here for the next one, uh, for the first one, I uh, just modified it. in the merge, I modified the first table. Of course, this one is the one that uh, I added manually. I don't care about it. But here, see for the first table, I have all the tables on the second tables. And from here on, it's the same thing. We just expand everything and we have the cross, cross join of everything. We can do the check that we did before, just adding a column, custom column, and check whether the Twitter handle on the left table is equal to the Twitter handle on the websites table. And if it's true, we take it out and keep only the false. And we have a different cross join using the self merge. Of course, it's not very useful to do a cross join, but I had situations where this was needed and tinkering this step here uh, 
we have to, to make sure the names are easier to write. This is why I insisted on them. So that's pretty much all from uh, my side. Uh, just some things to remember or, or watch out for doing joints. The matching columns must be the same type. Always select the same number of columns in the left table and the right table, primary or related, top or bottom, however you want to call it. Power query is case sensitive. So you saw if uh, you are doing a, a match on a column with a column that has a different casing, you won't get the expected results. So it would be good to um, lowercase or uppercase or make sure they, they have the same casing. Uh, make sure to watch out on the trailing or leading spaces. This could, uh, even if we don't see it uh, visually, could potentially cause problems. Uh, you saw the difference between merge, the inline merge and merge queries as new. There is no um, performance implications, but uh, I prefer ref referencing the first table and uh, do the merge there so I can have an audit trail much easier like this. Not removing the duplicates in the lookup tables uh, will get multiple matches, exactly what I showed you on the fuzzy matching. If you wanted to do this, like we did in uh, cross joints, it's okay. But if you didn't want to do it, uh, it can cause problems and you have to watch out for this. Merge on multiple columns. Uh, as I told you, the column names doesn't count by the order that you are selecting them. Yes, it does matter. They don't have to be from left to right. You can click them any way you want, as long as you are matching the right columns. And uh, watch out for the similarity th uh, threshold when, when doing fuzzy matching. Always check the results. Uh, in my experience, it's not very useful. Hmm. What's next? Use it or lose it. My advice, practice, practice, practice. Read books, blogs, watch YouTubes attend the user group meetups like this one, join the Excel and Power BI community, do some online or in-person uh, additional training if needed. And uh, again, practice. This makes everything perfect. Thank you all. These are my uh, contacts. If you want to write me, connect me on uh, LinkedIn or follow me on Twitter, these are my contacts. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Christian. Any questions on joins? Uh, there, there was one. Um, can, can you see the chat, Christian? Yes. Uh, there was one uh, not far up, only a little bit up from Jess about the transformation table. That the Pentix, oh, uh, just before Fraz made his comment about the Saudi Arabia. Just yeah. With the, the one with the Pentrick for approximate match. This is really good. It can be used also uh, on, uh, if you have beans, for example, you have beans of, uh, I don't know, discounts based on uh, uh, number of products. Let's say you have a discount. If you buy 100 pro products, you have uh, 1%. Uh, if you buy 300 products, you have 2%, something like this you can use the trick with the approximate match and uh, fix that issue too. It was uh, just a little bit further up than yeah. that. Uh, just asking, does the transformation table only apply to that one column, you know, like the from two, or does it apply to any any of the columns? That's, yeah, I found it. Does the transformation table only apply to one column in the original data, or will it apply to any of the columns? It will apply on the selected columns that you are doing. So if you are doing uh, one, it's one. If you are doing three, it's three. On that specific transformation uh, column, you have to put from what is doing uh, to what name. What needs to be translated? Cool. I think you might need to scroll back down, Christian, because now there's lots of comments uh, saying how great it was. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Claudia. <laughs> thank you all for joining and uh, i hope you saw something new for the more seasoned ones and uh, i hope it was clear enough for the new
Power Query tinkering uh, users that uh, are present. Yes. And uh, thanks again, uh, Thea and Alex, uh, Alex, Alan, for <laughs> inviting me. It was uh, really nervous. I was really nervous at the beginning, but uh, in the end, it was okay. You did a great job, Christian. Yeah, we're in good crowds. Thank you. Buddy. Well, uh, thanks again. Um, yeah, Romulus. Uh, cool. So lots of comments for you to read there, Christian. Always nice to see uh, appreciation for you. Your yeah. Thank you, everyone. Um, thanks. So I'm going to close down the YouTube stream. Um, there's been some comments on there as well. Uh, let me close that down. Uh, cool. If anyone does have a question, um, I know we're running a bit over, but some people don't mind. Feel free. I think we are over a bit longer. Yeah, we are a little bit.